Hello everyone and welcome to my March reading vlog. Can you believe that I've been doing these reading vlogs for a year now? Because I believe it was March of last year that I, well, that I did my first reading vlog, which is obviously very amazing. And I'm going to continue doing them for as long as you want to watch them. I need to talk about a book which is lying right here and which I finished last night. It is Hexied by Margaret Edward. Maybe I should just find the actual cover. Here it is. As you might know, this is a retelling of a Shakespeare play, this series, and this specific book is by Margaret Edward and it's a retelling of The Tempest. I really liked it. I really did. I think that Edward did an excellent job and I hadn't read the Tempest previously, but I think that Edward is really good at explaining the original play while retelling it in a modern format. And in this book we get to know Felix, who is a teacher and who decides to teach a bunch of prisoners to play The Tempest. I ended up giving this book four stars. I'm still a little bit vague as to whether it's more like 3.5, but I'm just, I feel generous today and it was really good retelling, so four stars it is for me. This movie was amazing. Don't mind my hair, it's having a life of its own today. Today is March the 8th and it is about 7 in the evening and I have finished another book which is a classic, The Priory by Dorothy Whipple. Now this novel revolves around the Priory of Sandby, which is placed somewhere in England and it basically deals with the persons living in this house, the family, and how they develop over the span of many many years. I really liked it. I cared for the characters and the new ones that came along as the story went on, I cared for as well. And it was one of those novels that made me feel cozy and warm inside. I did end up giving it four and a half out of five stars. It didn't quite reach the five stars for me because the ending became way too idyllic and perfect for everyone. And I don't like when that happens because that is seldom how life turns out. So maybe that's pessimistic, I don't know. But I did like the novel all in all. And even though it's a huge one, I read it fairly quickly. I'm sitting here contemplating whether to continue with this series or not. Just because I have now finished the second book in the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Half. I have the third book here, which is called, if I can grab it, Fool's Fate. And it's even bigger. And the thing that makes me not so sure to continue, even though I had planned it, is that this book was basically just a build-up to the third one and I didn't feel like a lot of things were going on and I can't really get into much of the story because it is in the middle of a series but all in all it was interesting enough once I read it but I wasn't at any point eager to get back to it so that's why I gave it three stars but I am kind of curious to just finish the series and see what happens in this the third book but maybe I will just take a short break from Robin Hub and read something else. Hi guys, it is now a little bit later in the day and I have finished The Beginner's Goodbye by Anne Tyler. As you know, I have been working my way steadily through Anne Tyler's books during the past year. However, this book kind of disappointed me. It wasn't bad, but I didn't feel any connection to it whatsoever. It's about Aaron who has just lost his wife and it's about his loss and his doubts and his thoughts on this situation that he finds himself in. He's only 35 years old. He didn't really act his age, I think, which was kind of a problem in my eyes. But other than that, I just felt like this book didn't really connect with me. So what I'm trying to say is that I gave this book 2 out of 5 stars. It is so far my least favorite of Anne Tyler's, but still I consider it worth a read. Look who we have here. Hi, you. So it is time for me to talk about yet another book I have finished. Actually, these days I am doing a readathon for myself in order to read a lot of my unread books. I will link the video down below in case you haven't watched it yet. But for now, I will talk about Atonement by Ian McEwan 
which is a book that was very fascinating. I watched the movie a couple of years ago, but I must say that the movie is very different from the book, at least half of the book. The first half of the book was like the movie and it was enchanting. I really, really loved it. The second half of the book shifts a lot and it becomes very much serious but still very enchanting it doesn't follow the movie but i didn't mind it was interesting to read nevertheless but i still felt like the beginning was the strongest and the second half was good but kind of dull in some passages so all in all i gave this book four out of five stars i just finished uploading my spring tbr video and here are the books i have put them on my nightstand and i am so excited to dive into them and believe it or not here is zeus somewhere in here oh there you are hi zeus I hope this is working out with the lighting. So since I last spoke to you, I have finished two books. One of the books I rated one and a half star and the other one I rated four and a half star. So let's start with the one and a half star read, which is Artful by Ellie Smith. Now, this is a non-fiction piece of work and I did love the concept of it because it's basically four lectures that Ellie Smith gave at a university, written down in a book. They are all lectures on different things, on time and on edge for instance. So it was kind of interesting to read her thoughts on these things. But the thing is that it wasn't really interesting after all. It was way too digressive in some parts. You have to be very literate and very much into literature in order to get a lot of the references that she makes. So all in all, I just wasn't a fan. So one and a half star from me. And then the other one that I gave four and a half stars to is The Winds of Heaven by Monica Dickens. I seem to just love Monica Dickens and her works. I previously read Mariana and I adored that one. It was, it was my favorite classic of last year. But this one was almost just as good. It's about this mother who has three daughters and the mother is a widow and it seems like her three daughters do not want to take care of her. They keep fighting about who is to take her on next and it's all very sad for this poor mother. I thought it was really well written, some amazing characters. They're all so different and I really liked the story in general, so four and a half stars for me. Today is March the 14th and I have finished Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell, which I rated two stars. I read her other book, Wives and Daughters, last year I believe it was, and I think I gave that one five stars. It was really, really good. But this one was basically about this village of Cranford, which mainly consists of gossipy women. These women live according to norms and traditions and every chapter is a new anecdote on something that happens in Cranford that kind of surprised them or that they have to gossip about, something like that. I understood the concept and I understood the humor but I just wasn't interested in any of the characters and I was just not interested in their gossip and this was just 200 pages plain of gossip basically an intrigue not bad intrigue but just intrigue in general so yeah an okay book but not really a story for me i just finished the most amazing book this was just the right novel for me these days and that is this book by haruki murakami something let me just check the english title because i seem to always forget it Colorless Sukuru Tasaki and his years of pilgrimage. That's the title. As you might know, I'm quite a fan of Haruki Murakami. I love most of his books and this one was one of those. This one deals with five friends, five best friends from high school. And then we follow one of these men in specific as he grows up. And we learn that at one point these four best friends of his they decided to just cut him off completely from their friendship without giving him a reason why. And that has affected him deeply in his grown-up life. So that is the thing that this book revolves around. 
But what I love about it is that it gives you such a new perspective on life and ways to think. I think it's because it takes place in Japan and it's just a whole different culture and a whole new way of thinking and that shines through in this novel. I love that. And it's got a lot of symbolism. I just really appreciated this beautiful story and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I'm sitting here with Zeus and I have just finished Shame by Melanie Finn which was a very peculiar novel because the synopsis is very vague. It's about this woman who all of a sudden finds herself in Africa. We know she has a mysterious past and that something has forced her to go to Africa but we don't know what that is. I didn't know what to expect from this but I loved it very much because this is one of those books that is written very mysteriously. You get some hints here and there but you don't really get what is happening in the beginning and especially the beginning was kind of confusing but I really liked how it all came together and the characters were interesting to read about which is very important to me so I was intrigued and I was pleasantly surprised by this novel. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. I have here A Small Hotel by Robert Olin Butler, which was a very interesting novel in the sense that it deals with this love story that has gone wrong. It deals with a woman and her husband who have decided to separate after 20 years of marriage. And then this book is written in a kind of messy way because we follow their thoughts. It's not written in stream of consciousness but it's kind of similar and I was fascinated by that but the thing is that I didn't feel like I knew this couple very well and we were just thrown into this situation right from the beginning and I felt a kind of disconnect with the characters from the start because of that. So while it was an interesting novel it wasn't blowing me away in any way, so I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. I managed to finish Fool's Fate by Robin Hobb, which is the third book in the Tony Man trilogy, and it's about 800 pages long. I did really take my time with this book. Normally I would read it in some days, even though it's a long book, but after my readathon that I did a week ago, I needed to slow down, so I took my time with this one and it took me about 9-10 days to finish it and it's been really good to read it that way, I think. Now this book was really good. The story picked up from the second book and it became way more interesting and way more compelling. I was a huge fan and I liked how the story developed and I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. I did not finish any more books in March, so this is going to be the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it and until next video, happy reading!